Hey everybody, Carl Schuf here from Greensock, and today I want to talk to you about the exciting new cycle property in stagger based tweens. Historically, stagger based tweens required that the values that you were tweening from or to were the same for each tween. But with the new cycle property, we can do these cool alternating effects now. Uh, in the zipper effect by Elliot Gino, you'll see that every other item goes a different way, uses a different transform origin. And so we can use an array of values to cycle through, and we can also use function-based values, which I'll talk about as well. So by combining an array of values or function-based values, you can get some really cool effects. Uh, this text effect I'm doing right here is technically only two lines of code. So we're going to start with something very simple, and we're going to work our way up. All right, to show you the basics of how cycle works, I have a very simple example. In the HTML, we just have an unordered list with a bunch of list items in it. And then we have a very basic timeline set up where we have a simple stagger from, where we're staggering each list item in from an opacity of zero and an X of 200 with a stagger amount of 0 0.1. So each tween is going to happen 0 0.1 seconds after the previous one begins and you get something like this. So that's a really nice effect with just one little line of code. Um, but now suppose you wanted to alternate the direction at which these guys came in from. Maybe the first one comes in from the right, then the second one the left, and so on and so forth. Well, traditionally we would tell you to build a loop and then have some logic built in so that each odd and even tween gets, you know, special logic. Uh, but right now we've changed that all around because now we can use cycle, okay? So instead of saying x of 200, I'm going to add the cycle property, and we're going to pass in an object that contains the properties that we're going to animate, and then some sort of a rule for how we should cycle through the values, okay? And we're just going to say x is the property, and for specifying the values we're cycling through, we're going to start off by using a basic array. And I'm just going to say negative 100 and positive 100, all right? The next time I hit run, there you go. We have our alternating animations in a stagger. We're not limited to just using two values here. You know, I could put 200 and 300 in here. And the next time I run, you'll see that that pattern loops around, okay? The first four follow that rule, and then the second four, and it just keeps going. So you don't just have to do two values in here. And inside the cycle object, you can cycle through multiple properties. So maybe I'll do something like uh, rotation x. And again, we'll do our little array of negative 90 and 90. And then if I run, you'll see that we'll get alternating rotations there. And each item is rotating around its center, because that's the default. Um, and what we can do, though, is also alternate through the transform origin. So I'll just paste that in. So now each item is going to rotate from the top edge and then the bottom edge. We're going to alternate or cycle through those values. And then you get something like this. So that's pretty cool. And we can also put in a different Z value for that rotation, that transform origin as well. All right. And just to show you exactly how that works, maybe we'll slow it down just temporarily. And so then you have that kind of a thing. All right. So that's really smooth and we don't have to use a loop or any conditional logic. Um, we'll speed it up. And there you go, you have this nice little wiggly build, so to speak. Next, I want to talk about function-based values, okay? Function-based values are great when you want to do something unique for each value of every property in each tween that's getting generated from stagger from. Uh, a very common request that we have is, what if I want to do a stagger but randomize the values? Well, this is how we're going to do it. Um, inside the cycle object, I'm going to randomize the x value by doing this. I'm going to set the x property, and instead of passing in an array of values, I'm going to say, let's call a function to generate the value for each property of each tween, and it's going to look like this. I'm just going to create a function that returns a value, and right now I'm just going to say return math.random times, we'll say, 300, all right? So now when I run, you'll see that we come from a random x value, all right? So very basic example. It's probably not the best looking thing in the world, but that's how you can do it. Now, something else that you might want to do is maybe have each item come in from a slightly farther distance, okay? So instead of just randomizing it, maybe I say, you know, this one I want to come in from 
uh, 0, this one 20, and then 40 and 60. So I basically want to increment the value. All right, we'll check this out. This function takes an argument which represents the index of the tween that's being generated, okay? So I can use that value inside my function and do something like this. Just say, hey, you know what? How about i times 50? I'm going to hit run. And then now you're going to see that each item comes in from 50 pixels more than the previous one. How cool is that? All right, so there we have a function that's basically allowing us to increment the values for each pass through the stagger. Maybe I want to dynamically generate a different ease, okay? Check this out. I'm going to say for the ease property, you're going to create a function, all right, that's going to return an ease for me, okay? And the ease I'm going to return is going to be in back dot ease out. How does this work? All right, they each get the back ease, all right? And you'll see that they each overshoot the target by the same amount. But what I'm going to do is customize the configuration of this ease, all right? And I'm going to pass in a value of i, all right? And so now watch what happens. This gets pretty crazy. You'll see that as the eases come in from further distances, they now overshoot by greater distances. Now that's a little bit extreme and ridiculous, so I might just multiply that times 0 0.3. And we get now a very nice subtle effect where as we go through the list, they're coming in from greater distances and we're also increasing the amount of overshoot in the back ease. Before we wrap up this example, I'm just going to show you that the first object doesn't come in from anywhere, all right? That's because the index of the first tween is going to be zero. So to clean this up, I'm just going to multiply that first. Make sure we start with i plus one, multiply by 50. We'll go back to our normal time scale, hit run, and we've just added some nice subtle variances to our stagger animation using the cycle feature. All right, just to wrap up, I want to walk you through this more advanced technique. Uh, we think this cycle stuff is going to work great with text effects. So we're using our split text tool, which breaks apart text into words, characters, or lines, and lets you animate each one of those wherever you like. Split text is available for Club Greensock members, so check it out on our club page. Uh, but enough about that. Once we've split apart our text, we're referring to it as title text, okay? And then I just have a timeline with a stagger from and a stagger to that's going to create tweens on each character that's been split apart. So to analyze this better, I'm going to disable the second stagger two. And so let's just see what's the first effect. You'll see that we have this sort of wiggly worm snake sort of effect as the text comes in from the top and the bottom seemingly along a curve, all right? So let's check it out. Uh, we're going to be animating each character that we split apart. We have a back ease out ease going on. There's a little bit of left to right motion going on because we're coming in from an X of 100. All right, just gives a little bit more bounce, if you will. Uh, but the important part here is we're using cycle. And you'll see that cycle, we're going to be cycling through the Y value. And here, instead of inlining the function like I did previously, I'm just putting a reference to a function called curve, okay? And so what does curve do? Well, curve does just a little bit of math to plot the starting Y value of these letters uh, based on a cosine curve, okay? So I'm not going to get into the trigonometry of it at all because I'm definitely going to stumble and say something weird. Uh, but to show you exactly what's happening, I'm going to take out the opacity in this tween here. And you'll see that that's where all the characters start from, okay? So we have this nice little curve here. As I increase this multiplier here, if I make that 12, which is roughly, you know, 4 times pi, roughly, um, you get more little uh, iterations of that curve. So I think you get the general idea. I'm just going to bring this back down to 6.24. We'll add our opacity back in of 0. And this is what you get. Really nice, okay? So for the next tween, we're going to be doing our zipper effect. Let me just isolate it, the first one. And then we'll get, turn the second tween on, the second stagger 2. And here you go. We're alternating through each character, going up and down, and we're rotating in opposing directions also, okay? So by now, you should almost be able to guess 
how this is done. We're using the cycle property to specify that the y value of each tween is going to alternate or cycle through values of 100 and negative 100. And we're going to do the same thing for the rotation using negative 120 and positive 120. So as you can see, really easy to do this sort of zipper thing. We don't need to have multiple conditional loops as we're building our timeline. We literally have two main animation calls to stagger from and stagger to. And we get this really cool and slick effect that comes in with some flair and goes out pretty cool as well. So we totally urge you guys to take these demos that you've seen, fork them, play around with them, add your own effects, and uh, pass them around. All right, if you got any questions, see you in the forums. Happy tweening.